Not only did I upgrade it, I also came up with a few accessories. This thing is amazing. Initiating. Welcome back to my daily grind. Create yourself is what you'll find me doing every day and every night. No time to lose. One day, one step in the right direction. I'm Chris and I'm only here to show you if I can do it, you can do it too. Welcome back to the vlog. It is Sunday, another day, another chance to push hard. And the topic for this vlog is the final version of my DIY full bridge rectifier. So let's get it. By the way, all DIY projects right here, watch them all. But before we get started, love goes out to all my subscribers. Thank you for making my life special and worth living to the max. So let me try to get back with a sweet, sweet video. Well, yes, the day has finally come. I finally took the time and completed the build, my DIY full bridge rectifier build. And you can Check out the vlog right here. The initial build. This is the third full bridge rectifier vlog, if I reckon. And it's finally done. Back then when I built it, I wasn't sure if I will ever need it. It was for sure a cool project, but again, I wasn't sure about the purpose and all. But by now it turned out to be super useful. Definitely worthwhile, the effort. So yeah, let's take a close look. So yeah, oh my God, this is a stupid idea. So this is it. Well, uh, oh God, what am I doing? So this is it, this is how I store it basically. And not only did I upgrade it, I also came up with a few accessories. Let's move them aside for now. That's the power cable, of course. And as I said in the last full bridge rectifier vlog in the second one, well, I basically talked about all the needed upgrades that I have to make. That was one of them because that is basically the only safety hazard where the power comes in, basically. That is now safe and sound, covered with tape and zip ties, cable ties. And I also took the time and somewhat managed the cables. This is, of course, the cable that leads to the rectifying diode, which needs to get connected to whatever two of these pins. And then I also came up with this accessory. You can either use something that has a plug, plugs right in, or, well, you can use this accessory, then use the other plug, or you can also just use this little thing right here and insert plus and minus and then just snap it in place. And another solution would be to just clamp cables to these main lines, which I find myself doing quite often. And lastly, I soldered in a fuse mount because in one of my last vlogs I blow my first fuse because I managed to short out this rectifier. Oh my god. Oh rip. How, how the hell did it change? I just broke it. But anyways, that's the fuse mount right here and now I can easily, comfortably exchange fuses. Well, this obviously needs to get fixed now. Oh yeah, and lastly, I forgot about my little resistor right here. Well, this is actually not a little one. This is a, this is a pretty huge one and I use this thing to discharge the capacitors just like that basically. I thought about integrating it into this build somehow with a switch or something like that but I think this is quite perfect. So let's take it apart again. Right there, accessory slides in just like that. Same with the resistor and the power cable. It's quite nice and compact. It's quite heavy actually. I think it's like two or three kilograms. But yeah, cable management, it's safe more accessories, way more user-friendly. And yeah, this concludes my little full bridge rectifier project for good. Now it's all about using it. And oh boy, I am using it. Spark modules, flame fist project, what have you. This thing is amazing. Nothing major, but it definitely feels amazing to complete, to actually complete a project. But yeah, that's enough progress for today. Smash that like button the way I smashed this project. Let's go. Bang the bell like ka -ta to never miss DIY projects. Check the recent news on chrisviral.com and yeah, that's it for today. I will see you tomorrow.